Welcome to how to program and operate the ICOM ID888H amateur radio transceiver. This is a tutorial for new hams. Hams with a new to them radio, hams with an ICOM radio, or anyone interested in amateur radio. I'm Milt Reynolds, KJ7, PPX in Boise, Idaho, calling QST. Episodes 3 and 4 describe the first five controls of the front panel of the ID-880H transceiver. Menu, memory write, tuning dial, the band mode selector, and variable frequency operation. Variable frequency operation, or VFO mode, allows the transceiver to tune to precise, specific frequencies. In VFO mode, the transceiver is able to scan frequencies rapidly in six different ways. All, which is a full scan, scans all frequencies. Band scan, scans within a selected frequency band. Program scan, scans specific programmed frequency ranges. P-link, or programmed link scan, scans linked programmed frequency ranges. Duplex scan scans transmit and receive frequencies of, repeater, of a repeater station. And a tone scan scans for tones transmitted by a station. Episode 4 described how to scan in the first four ways. Now let's finish looking at VFO mode by scanning dupe and tone. The duplex scan mode, dupe, requires selection of a duplex frequency. A repeater station is about 14 miles from my location. To receive signals from this repeater station, my radio must be tuned to 146.940 MHz. So in VFO mode, tune to 146.94. Notice that the display indicates for this frequency it is duplex negative. The ID-888 by default assigns specific frequencies as duplex based upon national frequency standards and usage. The frequency range of 146.61 through 146.97 MHz is designated nationally for repeater outputs, meaning they typically would be used for duplex repeater stations. Duplex means the station uses one frequency for transmitting and a second frequency for receiving signals. Dupe negative means the frequency used by the station to receive signals is lower than its transmit frequency. This is called the station's offset direction. The FCC designates specific offsets for the frequencies in the 2 meter band. Below 147 MHz, the shift direction is negative, minus 0 0.6 MHz. Above 147 MHz, the shift is positive, positive 0 0.6 MHz. My local repeater station is duplex. It transmits on 146.940 MHz. It receives on 146.340 MHz. The difference between this station's transmit and receive frequencies is 0.6 MHz, or 600 kHz. Because the station's transmit frequency is below 147 MHz, the offset shift direction for the receive frequency must be negative, minus 600 kHz, or minus 0.6 MHz. Scanning dupe allows the radio to rapidly scan for both the transmit and the receive frequencies of a duplex repeater station. So after tuning to 146.940 MHz, let's start the scan. Long press VFO to select scan mode. Dial to dupe. And tap VFO to start scanning. The display indicates rapidly, back and forth, the two frequencies, 146.94 and 
and 146.34. I can verify the two different frequencies by using the MONI key. First, tap VFO to stop scanning. The display indicates the duplex transmit frequency, 146.94 MHz. Tap MONI to view the receive frequency. The display indicates busy. The squelch filter opens fully. Noise is not being filtered out. And the negative offset frequency of 146.340 MHz, the repeater station's receive frequency, is shown. The duplex receive frequency is 0.6 MHz lower than the duplex transmit frequency. Tap MONI to restore the squelch filter and return to the duplex station's transmit frequency, 146.940. Don't get confused. The station's transmit frequency is the frequency I must be listening to. It's my receive frequency. Typically, when websites list local repeaters, they will list only the repeater's transmit frequency, which is the frequency we need to be listening to. The repeater's transmit frequency is my receive frequency. So why bother with scanning duplex frequencies? Here's a diagram showing a repeater which transmits on a duplex frequency of 449.540 MHz. Two mobile ham operators are communicating through the repeater station. The operators transmit on a frequency of 444.540 MHz and receive on 449.54 MHz. The offset shift for this repeater station is negative 5 MHz. I'm at home listening to the same repeater station. My radio is tuned to 449.540 MHz, so I'm hearing only the signals being transmitted by the repeater. But perhaps one or both of the operators is close enough to me that I could hear their transmit frequency, which is 444.540 MHz. So I set my radio to scan for both frequencies. In VFO mode, Let's tune to the repeater's transmit frequency, 449.54. 44, 449.54. The display automatically indicates duplex mode with a negative offset. Long press VFO. It's set to dial to, to dupe. Tap VFO to start scanning. The display indicates rapid scanning of both frequencies. I can verify the two frequencies by stopping the scan. The display indicates 449.54, the repeater's transmit frequency. Tap MONI to disable the squelch filter. The display indicates 444.54 MHz, the repeater's receive frequency. Tap MONI to re-enable the squelch filter. The display returns to the repeater's transmit frequency, 449.54 MHz. Long press VFO. We're still set to scan for dupe, so tap VFO to start scanning. and tap VFO to stop. This is why it may be helpful to scan a duplex frequency. If one or both of the operators is close enough, my antenna could pick up their transmit frequency, 444.540 MHz. This means I could communicate with them without having to go through the repeater station. I can take note of the call sign of the operator I can hear on 444.54 MHz, and I wait until their conversation ends. Then, still using the repeater, I contact them and suggest we move to a simplex frequency. 
This allows me to communicate with the operator without having to use the repeater, allowing others more distant to have access to the repeater. There remains one last type of scan which may be activated in VFO mode, tone scanning. There are two primary tones which may be scanned, CTCSS, Continuous Tone Coded Squelch System, or DTCS, Digital Tone Code Squelch. Briefly, tones may be used by a repeater station to allow privacy or to screen out other nearby loud or noisy frequencies. So here's how to scan a selected frequency for a CTCSS tone. First, ensure the display indicates T for the selected frequency. The frequency of 449.540 MHz is not showing that it's set up for tone. There's no T displayed. So if a frequency does not indicate that it's set to receive tones, here's how to change that. Long press memory call, dial to, uh, to tone, and tap memory call to confirm and exit. Now this frequency is set up to receive a tone. With the display indicating a T for this frequency, long press VFO to select scan mode and dial to tone and tap VFO to start the scan. This, the display indicates RT which I take to mean something like regular tone. It's scanning each of the CTCSS tones in turn. If it receives a transmitted tone, it will stop the scan. Here's how to scan for a DTCS tone. Ensure that the display indicates for the selected frequency DTCS. If not, here's how to change that. Again, long press memory call. And this time, dial to DTCS. Now there's an option for DTCS, but there's a second one also. Very slight difference. The first one has an asterisk as a symbol. DTCS preceded by a very hard to see asterisk. The next one has no asterisk. This is the one we want. The plain no asterisk DTCS. So with your display showing this one, tap memory call to confirm and exit. The asterisk indicates alert mode, which we'll cover in a later episode. Selecting DTCS with the alert symbol will still scan, but for now it's less complicated if you select the plain DTCS. Now we can scan this frequency for any transmitted DTCS tones. Long press VFO to select scan mode. It's still on tone, so we'll tap VFO to start scanning. Display indicates CD, which I take to mean something like code digital, scanning each of the DTCS digital codes in turn. And again, the scan would pause if it receives a transmitted tone signal on this frequency. Why scan for tones? Repeater stations are typically configured to require users to transmit a tone along with their voice transmission. This prevents accidental or noisy stations from activating the repeater system. If I don't know what specific tone is required by the repeater, I could scan for the tone used by other users if they are located near my station. This has been How to Program and Operate the ICOM ID-880H Amateur Radio Transceiver. Thank you for watching, for liking, and for subscribing to my channel at youtube.com Milt Reynolds. I'm Milt Reynolds, KJ7PPX in Boise, Idaho, and I'll be clear on your final. 73.